to race number 12 of season 9 of the NCAA Race Snickers Cup Series. We're here live at Richmond International Raceway for daytime racing at one of the toughest short tracks on the circuit. We've already run Bristol. That was quite an interesting short track race. We're now ready for Richmond, and we'll see what happens here as Richmond native Anthony McCrory starts on the pole position, looking for the second win for Audi this season alongside of Matthew Dalio. Let's get the command. Drivers, start your engines! as there's the command to fire him up. We got an interesting scenario coming into today's race. We could end up having a new points leader for the first time in about three or four weeks. Ty Dent, due to the problems he had last week, he now only holds a five-point advantage over Lisa Gonzalez and William Duncan. And we're going to see William Duncan and Ty Dent both in this division. We're also going to see Chris Louvier in this division. He's fourth in points, and he's only 14 points back. And also in this division is Tim Walsh in the 15. He's fifth in the point standings, and he is only 21 points back. So it's going to be an interesting points battle amongst uh, Dent, Duncan, Louvier, and Walsh. And then we'll see how Lisa Gonzalez reacts to it in the Division 2 race. Ty Dent's the only Audi that's gone to victory lane this season. Anthony McCurry going to try and be the second as he'll try and pick up Kyotech Racing's first win of Season 9 here at his home track. But here we go. Green flags out. We're underway here. 26 laps of racing here in Division 1. And already Winston Rivers looking to the inside three wide into one. Strong move there by the rookie in the 17. And he's going to take the lead just like that. So Anthony McCrory not able to stay out in front very long. Rivers to the point. Gene Sanford now moves to second. So we'll jump to a different camera angle here. Oh, caution flags out already. The yellow flag is already waving here at Richmond. That did not take long at all. And it looks like it may have started pretty close up to the front of the field. But apparently they crossed the stripe before the flagman had the yellow flag in hand. So now they race it back to the line. And Winston Rivers will officially now be the leader under the caution flag as they'll decrease their speed down and file in behind the pace car. Let's see who involved in this one. Oh, looks like Andreas Allen in the 77 was a piece of it. And it might have just been a single car incident unless somebody's on pit road. Oh, last week's winner, Kyle Collins. A lot of front end damage on the number 13. Oh, that's a tough break for him. He had uh, just picked up a victory last week, was looking for good momentum, and it looks like it didn't happen here. I'm wondering if maybe the 77 spun out right in front of him or something. Everybody else appears to be okay. So the leader under this yellow flag is Winston Rivers. Pichu London lines up second. Third place right now is Poteet 14th, or 14th. Yeah, that was great. Fourth is Sanford. And pole sitter McCurry, that was a timely caution for him because he was really slipping back. He's now going to be in fifth place. Let's take a look and see what happened to Andreas Allen and last week's winner, Kyle Collins. Well, they're behind the haulers right now, so it's kind of hard to see, but you will see the contact. There you go. It was three wide with his teammate, John Cittadino, and then Noah Hart on the high side. And Noah just gets into his right rear. And there you see Kyle Collins nowhere to go as he runs into the back of the GameStop Chevrolet. Noah Hart then comes down, and I think... He uh, clipped the 999 of points leader Ty Dent. The other couple cars turned around there, too. We had uh, Luis Hernandez facing the wrong way, and uh, there you see Tim Walsh also spun out. So they uh, didn't really get any damage, I don't think, the 74 or the 15, but they did get involved in this wreck, and so that's... Uh, and also, Ty Dent got a slight piece of it, not anything that really is, is going to put him behind the wall or anything. So that was actually the points leader and fifth in points that actually did get uh, slight pieces of this incident. And as a result of that wreck that we just saw, we do have a driver behind the wall, and that is Andreas Allen. Kyle Collins has been able to repair his race car, return back to the racetrack. There he is. 
and he's going to start at the very tail end of the field. I believe they had to take the hood off of that number 13, so he's not going to be completely up to speed, I don't think, but uh, trying to salvage whatever he can after he won last week. Not bad strategy, because remember, even though Kyle Collins has a victory, he is pretty far down in the point standings. And only 16 race winners from this season can get into the chase for the championship. So every point really counts. So a tough break there for Andreas Allen. Early retirement from this race as we should be getting the signal of one to go here. And indeed we do. So we'll give you a rundown at least of the top ten. Winston Rivers is going to be the leader on this restart. P2 London is second. Third place is Dylan Poteet. 14th Gene Samp. Fort I did it again, didn't I? Fourth is Gene Sanfer, and fifth is Anthony McCurry. Sixth place will be Alan Cavanaro. Harrison Langford runs in seventh. Eighth place is Matthew Dalio. Michael Norman's now ninth, and Brandon Gonzalez completes the top ten. Johnny Gardner runs in eleventh. Twelfth is Corey Williams. Austin Weiner is thirteenth. Fourteenth, Charles Jackson, and fifteenth is Jack Kearney. John Cedino is sixteenth. Seventeenth, Tanner Sullivan. Eighteenth, Daniel Boyles. Points leader, Ty Dent, right now running in the nineteenth position, so right now he's running fairly well. You got Noah Hart in the 20th spot. Chris Louvier, William Duncan, where are those guys running? Well, Louvier is going to restart in 21st. Tim Walsh going to restart 24th. William Duncan restarts back in 27th place. As we've gotten the green, I believe, we'll jump back up here to the leader, Winston Rivers. Green flag back here on lap 8 of 26. Pichu London going to try to the inside of Winston Rivers for the lead, and he is there. He was able to get to the inside, coming off of two. And now we'll try and make the move here into three. Winston Rivers slides up a little bit in that corner, and now Pichu London's going to move by for the top position. The former Mobile and Cup Series champion is out front here at Richmond. Gene Samper underneath of Dylan Pote. That was for third. Now goes underneath Winston Rivers for second. Anthony McCurry following the 11. Pichu London continues to enjoy the view. It's kind of congested back here. Lincoln Norman trying to pick up some spots there behind his buddy Anthony McCurry. And oh, they're almost three wide. They are three wide now and almost four wide as Michael Norman thought about it. Now tucks back in behind Anthony McCurry and Dylan Pote. I think may have just made some contact with Winston Rivers. We're still clean so far though. As now McCurry moves to second, Norman now going to try and take that spot. And as these drivers continue to contest for that second position, Pichu London continues to enjoy the view out in front. Norman now moves into second. Pote now looking for third off McCurry. And now here comes Alan Cavanaro in the 67. For the past couple of weeks, a young motorsports driver has finished in the top 10 every single race. And oh, oh, four wide back there with Johnny Gardner, who made some contact with Brandon Gonzalez. They were four wide with himself, Gonzalez, Rivers, and Samfer, and how they kept that together, I don't know. That was a close call, a really close call. It was almost our second caution. As now Norman has taken control of the second position, poked teeth behind him in third. Let's see if these two now will try and maybe work together to run down the Pichu London machine. Michael Norman was a former winner last season at uh, I believe it was Auto Club. Dylan Pote, the former winner at Dover, as there was more contact back here. Someone was way down to the inside. I don't know who it was. Might have been Trevor Gelfi, but they almost made more contact back here. Might have been Corey Williams. Three wide back here with McLeod, Balkowitz, and Austin Talley. They're racing hard all over the racetrack, but they're keeping it together, though. Good hard racing all around this racetrack. Michael Norman has now closed up on Pichu London for the top position. Dylan Pote was with him for a moment, now has lost touch with the top two. And he's about to maybe fall into the clutches of fourth place, Alan Cavanaro. Norman looking low here. Can he get the run off of turn number two? I think he's alongside. Now we'll try and drag the race Pichu London into three. Has to slide up in front of him here in four. Perfect pass. New leader, Michael Norman in the number three car. And remember, his teammate Kyle Collins went to victory lane last week, and his other teammate Dunn LaPratt has gone to victory lane already this season too at Bristol. Michael Norman trying to become the third Michael Norman Motorsports driver to go to victory lane, but Pete Lund, I don't think he's done yet. He's still right there, and then you've got a good battle back here that may be shaping up. Dalen Poteet has third. Alan Cavanaro trying to close in, and then there's a battle for fifth going on right now. Anthony McCurry has it. Winston Rivers wants it. Brandon Gonzalez right there as well. 
ready to close in. Right behind him is the Daniel Voiles machine. Haven't talked about the 26, having a good run right now. Voiles 37th in points, would love to have a top 10 finish here. And who knows, some of these guys, who knows, they may end up still being able to get up in the hunt here for this win. We're on lap 18 of 26. It'll be eight to go when they hit the stripe next time around. There's still some time to work their way up here, but right now Michael Norman's got a very strong Chevrolet. He's been able to open up some distance between himself and Pichu London right now for the lead. London, I think, just slipped up in that corner, actually. And here's the battle for third. Cavanaro has finally reeled in Dylan Pote. And he's going to look to the inside, I think, here in three. Pote trying all he can to hold off that 67 machine. Tried to get the run there out of four. Might have succeeded if he could pull down in front of him here in one. And he does. Is Dylan Pote going to hang on to third place, at least for the moment. Back here, though, fifth place continuing to still be hotly contested. Now Winston Rivers moving underneath McCurry again. Gonzalez in this. Johnny Gardner's now entered the fray along with Daniel Boyles. Chris Louvier, fourth in points, is now entering this, as well as Harrison Langford, who's 11th in points, trying to work his way back into the top 10 in the standings. And now Gonzalez is going to take the fifth position. Back up here, you got Dylan Poteet still trying to hold off Alan Cavanaro. And Michael Norman has got about a seven car length advantage between himself and Pichu London. Last thing Michael Norman needs right now is a caution. If we got down to about three to go, then I think he'd be really fine with a caution flag because the race would probably end under yellow. But right now, the gap he's got between himself and Pichu London, I don't think he really wants to see any kind of a flag except the white flag and the checkered flag. Been a pretty struggling season so far for Michael Norman as well. Coming in with a new team of a whole host of rookie drivers with the exception of the returning Chris Dollerton. He's already got, uh, oh I also forgot, also he has another rookie driver that went to victory lane this season too. That was Jessica Villanueva at, uh, at Phoenix. So keep that in mind too. So that this would actually be the fourth win with the fourth Michael Norman Motorsports driver this season if Michael Norman's able to cash in here at Richmond. Now just look at the gap all the way back there to Pichu London. I don't think Pichu London's gonna be able to reel him in. He's been losing time to him every single lap as the battle for third is back on. Cavanaro now this time looks like he has Poteet and will clear him here into one. Poteet now slips back to fourth and Johnny Gardner has now moved his way up into the top five. Nice run there for the US Army Chevrolet out of Sega Motorsports. Meanwhile, it's all Michael Norman, and the white flag is waving for the Taco Bell Walking Dead Chevrolet out of M&M Motorsports. Michael Norman made that one move on Pichu London, and that was all he needed, and then he just opened up the gap. And Michael Norman, what a dominating performance after getting to the front. Michael Norman is going to capture his first win of Season 9 here today at Richmond International Raceway. He becomes the fourth Michael Norman Motorsports driver to win this season. It's back-to-back -back wins for m and in Division 1 after Kyle Collins' win last week. And it's the fourth different driver for that team to go to victory lane this season. They'll have four entries so far in this season's All-Star Race. That was some good hard racing all around this racetrack. A lot of times, Richmond can be a real wreck fest, but it wasn't today. We had that one wreck, that one caution, and then they raced it clean and green all the way to the end. And the standings are official. Michael Norman with the victory. Pete you London in second. Cavanaro will finish in third. So the streak of young motorsports drivers finishing in the top ten, at least one of them each week. It still continues. Dylan Poteet, strong run for him in fourth. That was a well-needed run for him. Same for Johnny Gardner. Great run for him in fifth place. McCurry also who's struggling in points. Great run in front of his hometown fans. Finishes in the sixth position. Brandon Gonzalez. Nice run for him in seventh. Lankford's going to finish in eighth. So this eighth place official will probably move him back up into the top ten in points. Chris Louvier. Very good run for him in the ninth position. Remember he came in 14 points behind Ty Dent and he finished uh, ten spots ahead of him. So he's closed up the gap by ten points in the stands between him and Dent. Voyle's going to finish out the day in the top ten. Great run for him. Trying to see where the rest of the drivers that came in running well in points finished. We know Ty Den finished in 19th place. 
Where did Tim Walsh and William Duncan finish? Looks like they're going to lose some ground to Ty Dent here today. As we look down here, William Duncan finished out the day in 31st, and Tim Walsh finished in 35th place. Tough break there for Kyle Collins. He finishes in 40th place, but he did finish ahead of two drivers, and uh, not, but neither one of them are uh, former winners from this season. But, hey, every point counts. So congratulations to Michael Norman on his win here in Division 1. Let's head over to Division 2 now and see what's going to happen in that race. So Ty Dent managed to finish in the 19th position in Division 1. Now the pressure is basically going to be on Lisa Gonzalez because Louvier was able to cut into the points lead Ty Dent has. He's now cut it down by 10 points. So now I think it's only a four-point advantage between Ty Dent and Chris Louvier. However, William Duncan and Tim Walsh were not able to fit ahead, or were able to finish ahead of Ty Dent in Division 1. Let's get the command, and I'll tell you some more about what the scenario is. Drivers, stop your engines! So after the Division 1 race, William Duncan and Tim Walsh are both going to be behind Ty Dent in the points still. So the pressure falls to Lisa Gonzalez to try and take the points lead over here. She has to finish in the 14th position or better. Technically, really has to finish 13th or better, or else if she finishes 14th, it would, be a bat it would actually be a tie atop the points lead. So we'll be keeping tabs on that 08 Sharpie Ford during the course of this race. This is the division she rolls off in. I think she's starting close to the rear of the field, too, so it's going to be quite a task for her. As Eric Burton starts on the pole position, alongside of James Shelley, Charles Sanford looking for some redemption from last week at Dover when he ran out of fuel with two to go while leading. He'll roll off third alongside of Henry Cavanaugh. Here we go, then, getting ready to go green flag race in here. 26 laps of racing in Division 2. Only one caution in Division 1. Is it possible for them to go caution-free here in Division 2? I wouldn't bank on it, but hey, stranger things have happened. Eric Burton got himself the jump of the year, though. Man, he pulled away from all this behind him. Sam for now battling for second with James Shelley, Kyle Corbett thinking about three wide. Oh, man, he wants to make that move, and now he's going to do it here into one. Sanford's got to give him room, though. And Sanford's not going to let him get to the inside, though. Sanford's able to keep in front, and he'll hold on to second place. Caution flags out, by the way. Trouble up in turn one, it looked like. As this all goes on behind Eric Burton, Burton going to lead him under caution. Sanford just barely beats out James Shelley for the second position. And, yep, there's a spin that happened in turn one. The smoke lingers in that portion of the racetrack. And it looks like it might have involved Jonathan Zorling. Oh, and two-time winner Danny Wells. Rear end damage on the Rockstar Chevrolet. Danny comes in 28th in the point standings. Badly, badly mangled on his Twinks Racing Chevrolet. Bob Jones looks like he just got turned under caution. And there's some other cars just in front of him with some damage. Theo Stegall, Christopher Pierce, Zach Krostowski. They might have backed up here under yellow. Look at the damage on the front of the BMW of Christopher Pierce and the 42 of Theo Stegall. Clint Spillman's got some damage as well. So too does Cole Daly. So I think they may have backed into each other there under yellow. Eric Burton's the leader, though. Let's take a look and see what actually brought out the caution flag here for the first time in Division 2. Well, this was interesting. Almost four wide coming off four here with Krastowski, Daly, Wells, and Jones. And Wells and Jones are going to be the two that actually trigger this whole wreck right here. Now, I don't know if the 27 turned the four or if the four turned down the 27. It may have been a little bit of both, but they're actually leaning on each other, heading down here into turn one. The 27 is on the apron. The four is on the apron. There's no way they're going to keep that together coming here into this turn. I think the 27 may have actually gotten the inside wall, and then there you go. Cole Daly gets clipped. Krastowski gets clipped. Clint Spillman gets clipped. Theo Stegall gets turned around, and you see Christopher Pierce into the back of Bob Jones. Benjamin Miles also gets a piece of it. Zach Rogers just barely squeaks through. There's Lisa Gonzalez getting through. Lots of valuable spots on track for her right there. And Danny Wells was able to keep going. But there you go. There's the whole... Kit and caboodle, if you will, 
And then the 78 got turned, uh, I think he got clipped maybe by Robert Piet, maybe he got clipped by Theo Stegall, but one way or the other, that's what caused him to be so far back. So the 42, the 27, the 07, all those guys, they didn't, even if they did back up into each other under caution, they got their damage from this wreck that took place in turn number one. And one has to wonder what's going on between the 4 and the 27. That did not look like just hard racing. That looked like that may have been a little bit more. So I don't know what that's all about. But, uh, I don't, I don't know. Just don't really have any words for it. We'll have to see if any NSRA penalties get handed out due to that. Danny Wells now will line up on the inside line one lap down. So it'll be the first time we'll have a lap car on the inside so far here today. Two drivers, though, are out of the race, Christopher Pierce and Theo Stagall. As the top tens, we get ready to go back to green. Eric Burton, Charles Sanford, Shelley, P.J. Williams, and Kyle Corbett as the top five. Then it's Dougie Shears, Henry Cavanaugh, Momo Akari is now eighth, Jacob Lawler is ninth, and Isaac Kanepa completes the top ten. As you can see, 11th place was last week's winner, Jeffrey Finguy. So we'll see what the 52 could do as he's trying to work his way into the top ten here for what would actually be his third straight top 10 finish if he can get it because he ended up finishing top 5 back at Infineon and then last week he finished with the victory. Eric Burton getting away very quickly and back here is where the trouble spot is. Everybody tried to get around Danny Wells. Now it's all wadded them up here. Still drivers trying to get around the 4 car. Momo Akari, Eric Powers going 3 wide underneath them. Now Dylan Young is going to get held up by the Rockstar Chevrolet. And they're going to go three wide underneath him. And oh, almost four wide there with Nathan Orman. And Dylan Young does get turned off the nose of the 124. Jessica Villanueva is collected as well. And that's going to bring out a yellow flag. Whoa, Zach Krastowski turning Zach Rogers in turn one. And here comes Eric Burton. He'll now receive the caution flag. Might want to watch out. They're, they're kind of getting into each other here. Oh, Zach Rogers. Well, I was wondering if he was going to retaliate against the 121 there. So he's just going to move on by him. But Dylan Young just got turned off of Nathan Orman's nose as they were trying to make it four wide underneath the lap machine of Danny Wells. And Dylan Young got the short end of the stick there. So the caution flags out. Eric Burton waiting for the pace car to come and pick up the field. Let's take a look and see what happened in slow motion to put us under the caution for the second time here in Division 2. And here's what happened. They were trying to make it work. Dylan Young had just gotten underneath of Danny Wells. I think he had him cleared and Nathan Orman's got uh, Lisa Gonzalez in his driver's side door so there really was no opportunity for him to be able to move down give Dylan Young any room. And Dylan Young almost saved it but not quite and then there's a shot from Jessica Villanueva. 15th in points, by the way, so it'll be interesting to see just how much damage she may have sustained. A little bit of contact there for the 97 of Jake Haynes, and then Zach Rogers going to get a shot right there. Whoa, close call there for the 24 of Kyle Matthews. Robert Piet, Bella Davis, they take the highway around. And then I'm curious to know what happens here. Now, the 63 did get tagged, so he was a little slower, and I don't think Krustowski recognized that. And he did try to, to move to the inside of the 63, but it was just a little too late. So I don't think he purposely wrecked Zach Rogers. I think he just didn't realize that Zach Rogers was slower. I think he thought the 63 had clearly uh, missed that wreck and was up to speed. And it kind of surprised him. Then when he made the move, it was too late to be able to get underneath of Zach Rogers' dodge. So that's why I think, that, I think probably that's why Zach Rogers maybe didn't even retaliate. Maybe he recognized that too. But whatever the case... That's what put us under the yellow. Let's go back for the restart once again. Well, we're past the halfway point. Lap 13 of 26 on the board. We'll be putting lap 14 on the board here as they cross the stripe. Eric Burton is still the leader. Second place is going to be James Shelley. P.J. Williams now in third. Charles Samfer in fourth. And Dougie Shears runs in fifth. Sixth place, Henry Cavanaugh. Jacob Lawler is now seventh. Finn Guy is now up to eighth. Ninth place is Isaac Canepa, and 10th is Kyle Corbett. Remember we said that Lisa Gonzalez has to finish basically 13th or better to take the points lead. Well, right now, she's getting close. She's 16th right now on the racetrack, just has to pick up a couple more spots, and you'd have a new points leader heading into next week at Auto Club. Just reminding you guys, the 
on the future schedule here, we do head to Auto Club Raceway, or California Raceway, Speedway, whichever you want to call it, in Fontana, California, for race number 13, and then it's the mid-season for Snickers Cup. We have our all-star race, and there's an interesting new format that's going to be enforced for that race at FTF, so you'll want to tune in for that race. There's a number of drivers that are going to be in that event, too, a lot of drivers. As a matter of fact, we may end up having... Well, I'm not going to say it, because it's, it's, it's going to be a bit of a surprise. So I'm not going to say anything. We already know Michael Norman's now clinched his way into the All-Star race with the win in Division 1. Eric Burton would love to be able to do the same here in Division 2, as they're going to have that Danny Wells machine to contend with again, because if we were able to go one more lap under caution here, then he would have to start wherever he was in this field. It'd be a single-file restart, but we are going to restart this race with 11 laps to go not with 10 to go, and so therefore it's a double file restart still. So Eric Burton, he's had two good jumps on the initial start of this race and the first restart. Will he be able to get another one here? He's been able to time him perfectly so far. Here we go, green flag. And looks like Burton got that, that restart timed perfectly again. He is down in front of Danny Wells. James Shelley trying to clear Danny, not able to do it this time. Now he'll be able to clear him here out of two. And I'm really nervous about that four car there. They gotta find a way around him. They gotta move him. Pulling up Charles Sanford right now. Sanford now gonna dive down to the inside. Now holding up last week's winner, Jeffrey Finguy. They are three wide there. And then right moving through. Finn guy still held up there behind him, along with Kyle Corbett. The three wide behind him, too. That was uh, Jessica Villanueva and company. And oh, contact there. Jeffrey Finn guy just put Danny Wells into the wall. I don't think he was happy about being behind him. I sure some squeal marks. Did someone just wreck? Yes, they did. Someone just wrecked. It might have been Robert Piet in the 195. Dylan Young's involved. Joshua Michaels and Zach Krastowski. Benjamin Miles as well. Ormond and Zach Rogers. As well as Jessica Villanueva. Caution flag out again. This one took place closer to the rear of the field. And in all honesty, I think it may have had something to do with that three wide formation I saw Jessica Villanueva in the middle of. Further back behind the whole thing that was going on behind Danny Wells. There's a car down on the inside near the wall. That, I think, could be Robert Piet. No, that's not. That's the 18. The 18 of Nilo Balvin. I don't know what's going on with that Toyota, but he is, looks like, going to come to pit road. So something happened to him. He was running 13th place. These cautions... They're kind of helping Eric Burton in a way, but Eric Burton gets such good restarts that he's able to open up distance, and now he'll be having everybody on his back door when we do get back to green. So he better hope that all the restarts he's timed perfectly so far, that that means he's going to time this last one perfectly. But let's take a look and see what happened. A big wreck, apparently, at the rear of the field. Well, actually, this wreck started, finished, and then continued over on the front straightaway. Here's the contact. Jessica Villanueva going to get hooked in the right rear by Nathan Ormond. They had been three wide with Carter Fargo a couple of turns ago. Now, Jessica Villanueva, you can see the smoke erupts immediately. That was a hard hit for her into that outside wall. As she's trying to keep her car up to the high side so everyone can avoid. Actually, she might have actually tried to come down to go to the apron. Although she stays right in the middle of the racetrack, though. And then Joshua Michael's going to hit her. And then she gets put up into the wall again. Orman gets collected again. Ian Dutta going to get a tiny piece of it. There's where Robert Piet's going to get clipped. He's going to slide up into the wall. Dylan Young tries to get it low enough, but he hits Nathan Ormond. And then all these guys on the high side are just blocked. Rogers nowhere to go. He gets Krustowski. A little bit of irony there that Rogers hits Krustowski after a couple of cautions ago. Krustowski hit Rogers. And there you see Benjamin Miles also involved as well. So that was, uh, in my opinion, a wreck that really could have been avoided. Villanueva kept her car in the middle of the racetrack when it was smoking. That was not a smart move on the part of the 62, and I think there's going to be some drivers aren't going to be too pleased with what that uh, Chevrolet did. 
Well, we have not yet gotten the signal of one to go. We're currently on lap 22 of 26. So the, we will not get the green flag any earlier than lap 24, which would mean that we would have a total of three laps remaining in this race. However, if we don't end up getting the signal this time, then uh, that means that we'd have a green-white checker. So it all depends on when NSRA decides the track is clean enough to be able to go. There was a lot of oil that was spilled on the front straightaway due to that 62 car continuing after the hit into the turn four wall, but apparently we are good to go. We will get back green on lap 24 of 26, three laps remaining. It will be a single file restart this time. Eric Byrne will have no lap car to the inside to be able to use as a pick. James Shelley right behind him in second, former winner in the Last of Us Light series. Keep that in mind. PJ Williams behind him in third. Fourth place is going to be Henry Cavanaugh, and fifth place is Isaac Canepa. Then you got Dougie Shear sixth, Charles Sanford runs seventh. 8th is Webster Zygarde, then you've got Lyndon Wright in ninth, and Momo Akari is in 10th. Look where Lisa Gonzalez is running, 12th place right now, at the moment, by one point. I believe, no, actually two points, she is the new points leader. She's just got to finish in that area, right behind former champion Jacob Lawler. Here we go then. Eric Burton, he's been timing restarts perfectly all day. Can he time this last one? Three laps to go. James Shelley right there with him, though. Shelley looking to the inside. Eric Burton going to try and block. Shelley not able to make the move this time as the battle's on for third. Oh, Eric Burton would love to see a caution, but it's not coming yet. Here comes James Shelley looking low again. Eric Burton still throwing the block here. And now James Shelley may try again here in one. Two to go here, less than two to go. Shelley continues to hound Eric Burton for the lead. Burton doing everything he can to mirror drive and block the advances of the Florida Gator Chevy. Here comes James Shelley looking again. This time he gets to the inside. Burton not able to throw the block. It's the white flag. Shelley leads. Burton is right now on the outside trying to battle back. Here he comes. He's not able to make it this time, and now he can't make it stick. Shelley has cleared him for the lead. James Shelley makes the move. Timed it perfectly. Burton going to try and battle back here, but he's lost it. James Shelley with the move on the final lap is going to win here his first Nickers Cup Series race of his career here at Richmond. Timing, timing, timing. Burton was able to get away from everyone every single restart, but the final restart, James Shelley was able to hang with him. He made the move in one on the final lap. And James Shelley is going to win his first Snickers Cup Series event. It's his second win of his NCAA career after winning last year in the Last of Us Light Series. What a victory for that team. James Shelley, a rookie coming in this season into Snickers Cup competition, and he just took his first Snickers Cup Series checkered flag. Standings are official. James Shelley with the win. Eric Burton so close but just couldn't quite hang on. He drove it really hard there into three as well to try and make the move back for the win. Couldn't do it. He'll have to settle for second. Still a great run for him though. Third place for P.J. Williams. Nice run for that rookie. Dougie Shears didn't really talk much about the 46 but a great run for the Schwab Racing Chevrolet in fourth. And Henry Cavanaugh. Great run for him. He's really been struggling at points. Nice top five. For that guy. Isaac Canepa going to finish out the day in 6th. Momo Akari in 7th. 8th place was Jacob Lawler. Ninth Webster Zygarde. And Mason Powers was able to battle his way back into the top 10 in the finish of today's race. And if you take a look, Lisa Gonzalez ended up finishing in 16th position. Which means that Lisa Gonzalez is going to right now still be 2 points short of taking the points lead away from Ty Dent. Ty Dent will still have the points lead. Gonzalez will be second in points, two points back, and Louvier, with his great run today, will be third in points, four points back. It'll be four points separating the top three in points heading into next week at Auto Club. This is going to be a very interesting points battle next week, but Ty Dent survives for another week atop the point standings. But we still got to find out what happens over in Division 3. So let's head over there now as we'll show you 
the rest of your finishing results here. More retirees than we had in the uh, first division race for sure. But still a pretty good race nonetheless. So as you take a look there at your full finishing results from Division 2, let's head over now for the final division race here at Richmond. <laughs> Now we get ready for Division 3 racing here at Richmond. You'll notice it's a little bit more overcast than it uh, has been in the other two races. And that's kind of ironic because it was a little overcast in the Infineon race, Division 3 race, last week, as opposed to Division 1 and 2. So a little irony there, but let's go down and get the command for Division 3 to start up. Drivers, start your engines! And Ryan Shelton will be starting on the pole here. I think it's his first pole of the season in Division 3 alongside of him. A guy who is actually up battling for the points lead uh, quite a few weeks ago. James Silverbox trying to get himself back on track as he's fallen to 27th in standings. James Qualls lines up third. Qualls is actually, uh, if I recall, I think he was running well in points. He's 19th in the standings. And alongside of him is Charles Belding, who's actually been putting together a string of fairly good finishes in the past couple of weeks. Now, this is ironically the division where not much is going to happen as far as the battle for the points lead because the highest running driver in points here in Division 3 is Cody Lamas and he's 10th in the standing. Zach Buchanan is 12th. Dylan Casella is 14th. Joshua Mudd 17th. Sean Henley 18th and James Qualls 19th. So there's not going to be a battle for the points lead but someone can move themselves up into the top 10 here today as the green flag is out here at Richmond in Division 3. The reason I pointed out those overcast conditions now is because of the fact it's going to be a little bit more grip for these drivers to be able to utilize as they try making passes on each other. James Qualls tried to pass Ryan Shelton for the lead, couldn't quite do it out of two. Now he's side by side with James Silverfox for the second position. Derek Pemberton right there as well, and right behind him, Jay Barker. A lot of Fords up here at the front. Oh, Shelton slipped up there in the middle of turns one and two. James Qualls going to get to the inside. Here comes. Galish Ford, and oh, he's trying to kind of move Ryan Shelton up the track, and I think he succeeded. He goes to the lead, but for how long? Derek Pemberton now looks to the inside three wide. He settled it out to two wide now as Pemberton's going to get the lead now out of turn number two. Move the 181 to the lead, and the caution flag's out for the first time. Must have been something near the back because all the leaders are up here still up at the front and it didn't really look like any gap between themselves and anybody else near mid-pack. So caution flag out for the first time here in Division 3 at Richmond. I do believe Fords have swept the top five right now. I think it's Pemberton, Qualls, Silver Fox, Chris Kyle, and Jay Barker. But uh, let's take a look and see who was involved in this. Oh, Cody Lamas, 10th in points. David Rivera, he's just been having a, such a struggling season, has that 86. He was collected in this. Blink, he's running here near the back, waiting for a camera angle to see if he has any damage on his machine or not. Now apparently it looks like he's okay. There's Angel Navarro, last week's winner from Dover, all the way back in 37th. It looks like it was Cody Lamas and David Rivera, the two that were involved, and I think Cody... Did he get out ahead of the leaders? No, he is a lap down, so this is not good for Cody Lamas right now. He's got to hope somehow, some way he can get himself back on the lead lap, because as I said, he comes in 10th in the point stand. He's been having such a strong season. This was not what he needed early on here at Richmond. As Derek Pemberton is your leader under our first yellow. Let's take a look at the replay. Well, just a lap ago, Cody Lamas was rubbing doors with Joshua Mudd, and then... That got him moved into the outside of a three-wide situation coming here off of four, and the contact's going to come between himself and Levi McIntyre. McIntyre going to get right there into the left rear of the low Chevy Camaro. Sends him up the racetrack. And there you can see David Rivera absolutely nowhere to go. Dorian Face Puncher going to try and turn dead left to avoid. TJ Dent trying to avoid there. And, oh, Blaine Keys did get a piece of it. And wait a minute, Cody Lamas... Oh, so that's why the 48 had to teleport to pit road. I didn't think he looked like he had a whole lot of damage, but because his car flipped upside down, he had to teleport to the pit lane. So that's a tough break there for Cody, who more than likely would have been able to drive away from that incident and still been able to continue, and that is why he's been caught a lap down now. But he is still running, but that's what happened. A little bit of contact there. I think that was 
kind of a, a chain reaction hit off of Blaine Keys to David Rivera and then Rivera into Lamas. And Dorian Face Puncher did get a piece of that as well. Well, we haven't gotten the signal yet that we're getting ready to go green. We are on lap 7 of 26, but the lights are still on atop the pace car. You know, it's kind of ironic when I was looking at that wreck. It was Levi McIntyre who made the contact with Cody Lamas. And Lamas then slid up and ended up making contact with two of McIntyre's rookie teammates, David Rivera and Dorian's face punchers. So, a uh, little bit of a oopsies on the part of the team owner there of uh, heavy metal hip hop racing. Anyway, this is the way they'll line up. When we go back to green. Derek Pemberton is the leader. Second place right now is James Qualls. Third is Jay Barker. And fourth is James Silverfox. You got four Fords inside the top four, and then the pole sitter, Ryan Shilton's Camaro, completes the top five. Chris Kyle runs in six, so we've got five Fords in the top six. Charles Belding runs seventh. Zach Buchanan is right now in eighth. Ninth place is Dion Scott, and Sean Galligan has completed the top ten. We have gotten the signal of one to go. There you see Cody Lamas going to come up the inside line. He is one lap down to the leaders. Dylan Casella lines up in 11th. 12th is Alex Pedro. Richard Johnson, 13th. Trent Dunham, 14th. Ryan Rezzo is in 15th, 16th Henry Nova, Nathan Hudson runs 17th, 18th is Johnny, or Stephanie Gardner rather, Joseph Srigley runs 19th, and 20th is Alex Hawkins. Let's go a little bit further back, Joshua Collier 21st, 22nd Connor Breton, uh, Roy Vidarvo 23rd, 24th Carson Gum, 25th Chris Maley, Joshua Mudd runs 26th, 27th is Jerry Guerra, rest of the top 30 are Dunn LaPrad, Tristan Wilhoit, and Ryan Acosta. We'll move back up here to the leader, Derek Pemberton. We're back green. Let's see if Cody Lamas can race his way back onto the tail end of the lead lap here. It doesn't look like he got a good jump, though, and Derek Pemberton's been able to clear him. Oh, but Cody. Oh, wait a minute. Cody was pretty strong there coming out of two. Cody Lamas can get up there. He may have a shot at maybe getting himself back on the tail end of the lead lap, and now Jay Barker moves him to the high side, and that's going to kind of kill all the momentum of the 48. So Pemberton now leads, Barker into second, battle on for third, and that's very quickly taken by James Silverfox as he'll move by James Qualls for that position. Ford's still in the top four, four of them. Battle on for third place again, Qualls now does the crossover on Silverfox as Jay Barker tries to go to work on running down Derek Pemberton for the lead. Zach Buchanan. He's got a lot to gain right now here today. We've already documented Cody Lamas' problems today. Buchanan comes in 12th in points, trying to move his way back into the top 10 in standings. Could do it here. He's having a really good run right now in the top 10. Currently scored in the 6th position. About to maybe get a challenge from Deion Scott for that position. Walls now moves back underneath the Silver Fox. He'll take 3rd. Belding now going to try and fill the gap that Walls left on the inside line of the Vodafone Ford. And he'll try and take 4th. Derek Pemberton very happy right now that everything is still clean and green as he enjoys about a 4-5 or five car length advantage between himself and Jay Barker. Both these drivers still looking for their first wins of their career. Right now the odds in favor of them unless we end up having a caution and it bunches everybody back up. But right now Derek Pemberton has been able to keep it kind of status quo between himself and Jay Barker. The best battle on track has been going on here between James Qualls, Charles Belding, and James Silverfox for that third position. And it still is continuing to heat up here. Qualls still in third. Silverfox looking for fourth underneath the Belding. And they're three wide further back there. That was Collar, Trent Dunham, and somebody else. I couldn't tell who. I guess that was the lap machine of Cody Lamas. Cody appears to still be up to speed with these guys. He just is mired back in traffic now, and so even if Caution comes out, he still would be trapped a lap down. They're racing hard further back here. Dylan Casella trying to go three wide as they try and get by Cody Lamas. Not able to make the move quite yet this time. Let's find last week's winner. Guy who used fuel strategy at Dover, Angel Navarro. Well, he was 37th the last time I looked, and now he's fallen back all the way to the 39th position. So this is not a great follow-up race for the Zaxby's Toyota, as uh, he's not making much of an impact right now, one week after going victory lane. Meanwhile, the gap, I think, may have opened up a little bit more between Derek Pemberton and Jay Barker. Pemberton still 
with about maybe now a 6-7 car length advantage between himself and the 58. You have the Coca-Cola Ford and the Royal Cola Ford going at it here for the win. And the laps are ticking down too. We are getting close now to pretty much crunch time as we call it. Lap 19 going on the board. We have a total now of eight laps remaining in this race. So if Jay Barker is gonna close the distance up between himself and Derek Pemberton, he better do it sooner rather than later. If we get close to the point of about maybe four to go, especially three to go, and the caution does come out, Jay Barker is not gonna have another restart to be able to utilize in order to try and pass Derek Pemberton for the lead. It's gotta be kinda now or never. He's gotta run him down now. Speaking of running down though, Jay Barker may have some company. Silver Fox is now starting to close in on him for that runner-up spot. Charles Belding right there, and Zach McCann has now moved his way into the top five as Qualls has slipped all the way back to six. Here's a battle on for what would be the seventh position, Sean Galligan. He's been on a bit of a streak as of late, a couple of really good finishes last week at Dover and then earlier on a couple weeks ago at Infineon. Right now running the top ten in the eighth position. Everything for the most part is either single file or a lot of room double file. So it doesn't look like the likelihood of a caution is going to be in the works. As Silver Fox is all over the back bumper of Jay Barker. And the one guy that's got to be loving this fact is Derek Pemberton. However, is it possible for the 58 and the 10 to maybe draft together to catch the 181? Because it looks like they are slowly closing the distance. Interesting strategy here with four to go. The 10 and the 58 drafting together, working together to be able to utilize more speed on the racetrack than the leader is. And they are going to possibly be on his back door. This thing may not be over yet. A little bit of separation now between Parker and Silver Fox as they continue to try and run down Pemberton. Silver Fox has got to get back to the rear bumper of that 58 to be able to cut themselves some draft. Time is running out. Time is of the essence. Less than three to go. Two and a half as they're on the back straightaway. Now Silver Fox, he's back to the back bumper of the 58. Can these two work together again? It's Richmond. It doesn't take them long to get around here. Two to go now as they hit the stripe. Silver Fox and Barker doing everything they can to try and close up the gap between themselves and Derek Pemberton. And now Silver Fox says, okay, enough of this. I'm going to try and take that second position because I think Silver Fox realizes it's pretty much too little too late to try and catch up to Derek Pemberton. White flag, one more lap for the rookie. Derek Pemberton in the 181 trying to go to victory lane here for the first time in his career. Silver Fox. Moving underneath Jay Barker, knows that the only thing he can basically try and do is get second place. As through turns three and four for the final time, Derek Pemberton's gonna hang on and capture his first career Snickers Cup Series win. Derek Pemberton wins Division Three here at Richmond. Pemberton got the lead and never looked back. He opened up the distance between himself and Jay Barker. It looked like they may have been able to close up the gap, but nope, not going to happen. And Derek Pemberton, what a victory for him here today in that 181 machine. I believe our standings are already official. And they are indeed. Silver Fox was able to get second place away from Jay Barker, so Silver Fox may be making a bit of a climb in the standings once again. Charles Belding, great run for him in the fourth position, and Zach Buchanan, I think this may move him back in the top ten in points with a fifth place run. Sean Galligan was able to get around Dion Scott, he'll finish in sixth, Scott will finish seventh. Qualls slipped back uh, about midway through this race, he'll finish in eighth though. Chris Kyle in ninth, and former winner this season Ryan Rezzo will complete the top ten. The pole slitter Ryan Shelton slid all the way back to the thirteenth position. And as you look at the rest of your finishing results here, We'll scroll down, and as you can see, we had Cody Lamas have that problem there on the, I think it was around lap three. He ended up finishing one lap down. That's really going to hurt him in the points, and David Rivera ended up finishing as the only car out of the race. So, as I said, this isn't going to be much of a battle for the points lead between these Division Three drivers, because the highest running in points out of these drivers coming into uh, tonight's race uh, was uh, Cody Lamas. And so, not going to be much of a factor there. However, 
There may be a little bit of shuffling of drivers into the top 10 and out of the top 10 in points. Cody Lamas may fall out. Buchanan may move in. We may see maybe James Qualls as well be able to move his way up into the top 10 in points depending on where everybody else finished in the Division 1, Division 2 races. So Michael Norman wins the Division 1 race, his first win of the season. Division 2 goes to the rookie James Shelley, and then rookie Derek Pemberton picks up his first win of his Snickers Cup Series career as well here in Division 3. Next week, folks, we head to Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California for our final regular season race for the first half of this season before we pack it all up and get ready for some good old all-star racing at FTF Super Speedway. Hope you guys enjoyed this race, these races, I should say, here from Richmond. If you did, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to get part of the crew today. You've looked at your official finishing results. We'll show you the rest of them here for Division 3 one more time. If you uh, want to see the other ones, they're over in Division 1 and 2 earlier on in this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to check out the N3M social media, Facebook, and Twitter links are in the description. And you've been watching a production of the NSDRA Offline Racing at its best.